morning. Um, it is a Sunday in July, and with that being said, there's a lot going on in the garden. Tomatoes are turning colors, cucumbers need harvested, zucchini needs harvested, onions are coming out, garlic's coming out, beans are ready. It's, uh, it's go time, and part of that is all of the basil that needs harvested repeatedly. Um, so we've got a bed of basil here, basil planted throughout the garden in different places. So part of this morning is a couple things. One, it needs harvested and I'll be making some pesto with it today. So I'm going to kind of show you the way that I do it. Um, not necessarily the way everyone does it. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of walk through this whole process with you. So, like I said, when you see something like this, you know, you want that out of there. So a lot of times I'll just, you know, you can do it by hand, you can do it with scissors or knives or, you know, whatever, and just get rid of those. Um, so what, you know, some people do, you know, they'll just come in and, you know, they'll you know, take the bigger leaves. I do that, but what I try to do as well is I try to take what's called the heart out. Um, so like right here, this section right here would be called the heart. And if you look and come down here a little bit, there's a little, if there's a tomato, it'd be a sucker, but you got a little growth there and a little growth right there. So if we snip that out and have that little, look at that, have that little bit of basil there. Underneath it, these two little sections are going, oh, right there, those two little guys are going to grow and build out. So if you take one heart, it'll get replaced by two if you do it properly. Now I still want to take bigger leaves there because we, we want to allow for the airflow underneath. I'm, I'm personally, I don't worry too much about taking all these, you know, these side leaves. I'll take some. But I still want to make sure the plant's full and healthy and that my focus is working on all these little hearts here to allow all those duplicates underneath there to come in behind it. And like I said, by doing that, you may not harvest a lot on the first the first couple of times you do it, but your basil plant is going to continue to get bushier and fuller throughout the process. So I'm going to get through this. Um, I'm sure we'll edit and speed it up so you can see all that in fast motion. Um, but we'll reconvene once we uh, start making some pesto.
about half a salad spinner full of basil leaves and obviously this basil crop here. So if I did it correctly with the way that I like to do it, um, if you were to walk in our garden right now and look at this, it should appear that it hasn't just been harvested. Um, you know, we still have full healthy plants. We have a nice harvest here. Um, and then, you know, all these little guys here are gonna be growing, become, you know, the multiple heads. Uh, if you saw, I was taking some of the bigger leaves off the bottom here, again, to allow that airflow underneath. Uh, that airflow will, you know, prevent against different, you know, mildews and funguses and, you know, different rots and stuff you can get. So you always wanna make sure, you know, you want nice, full, healthy plants, but you also wanna make sure that no matter what it is from, you know, tomatoes and peppers to basil, that there's still that allowance of airflow. All right, we are back inside now. And just in case you've never made pesto before, this is all you need. So we have olive oil, salt and pepper, Parmesan cheese, garlic, pine nuts, the basil we harvested, and then the food processor. So I'm just gonna go through and clean the basil, spin it out, and just kind of you know walk through the whole process of getting the leaves in there, you know, adding the you know the nuts and the garlic and everything else to it, um, and getting that spun down. Um, I don't measure anything, so you know we harvest however much basil there's ready, and then I just start adding the ingredients. You know, let's get the, get the basil in first. And then start getting some weight on top of there. Get the olive oil on, get the garlic on, get the nuts on there. Um, if you don't have pine nuts, we've used cashews in the past. It's worked just fine. Um, I think I believe we, we've used almonds before, and that's worked just fine. Walnuts we've used. Uh, we've done pistachios once. Don't think that was a good idea. No pistachios. Um, you know, again, uh, the garlic, that's all going to depend on what you have, how big the bulbs are how big the cloves are, what type of garlic you have, how much garlic you like in your, your, you know, your, your pesto or your food in general, um, and same thing. So you're just kind of going for a nice creamy consistency. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, jump into that and see what we end up with. Tastes delicious. Um, if you notice, I went back and added a little bit more garlic, a little bit more pine nut, a little bit more salt and pepper after a couple taste tests. Little short on Parmesan cheese, uh, but we're short on Parmesan cheese. I put everything we had in there. Uh, so we're just going to mark on the bag after we freeze it that um, you know this is going to need some little bit of Parmesan added to it. And that will be that. So yeah, all we're going to do from here is put in the clumps onto you know some kind of uh, baking sheet or baking dish of some variety and get in the freezer get it frozen get it labeled up for enjoyment later probably have a little bit fresh since it's here so all right so that is harvesting basil all the way through making pesto we pretty much grow basil solely for the purpose of making pesto 
we're getting better at using it in other things other than simply pesto and into dishes and whatnot. Um, but that's that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments.